All right, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's virtual plant clinic. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with University of Florida IFAS Extension Service here in Hernando County, Florida. And with me today is my regular co-host, Lily mm -hmm. Browning. You're together who is again. Our back together again. Yes. Uh, well, it's been a couple weeks in a row, hasn't it? Um, you were out, and then yeah. I couldn't be here because had too much going on, getting ready for several things at a time. So now we're together again. Yes, I have like paperwork season coming up, so I'm going to be busy with that. But I think I'm I'm clear to be on here all the way through the holidays, pretty much. Okay, should be good. Yeah. We were just discussing that um, Saturday, I was at the Sheriff Safety and Fun Fest in downtown Brooksville, and we bring a lot of stuff. So that was, you know, a lot of physical work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Monday, putting it all away again. Um, Monday, at least I had help from some the guys around here who unloaded the van for me. And then I kind of organized it all and put it away again. But Saturday, if you look at Hernando County government's Facebook page, you can see that I was in two places at one time. I'm getting pretty good. Like magic. It is. I was, I was uh, at that event in downtown Brooksville as well as an event in Silverthorne at the same time. Wow, very good. Yes. Or someone in Silverthorne asked me for my materials and they set up a table there. So, hey, it works. Spread it around. Yeah. Love. Getting help from others is nice every once in a while. Mm -hmm. She wanted me to be at her community event in Silverthorne. I'm like, well, I'm sorry. I already committed to the sheriff's uh, event. So, and I was there with Carmen Bruno, um, recycling coordinator. Bill sauntered by, walking his dogs with his wife. <laughs> yeah, I just came by as a citizen observer yes that evening yes yes and who knew that bill would ever be the kind of person who would push a chihuahua in a purple stroller around downtown brooksville <laughs> i'm still trying to get used to that chihuahua i like huskies a whole lot better yes yes it was good to see cashmere he, he looked very nice and was in a good he mood. He had a great time. He loves getting out and getting petted by strangers and kids. And he's a little, he hadn't been out for a while, so he's a little nervous around all those people, but he had a good time. Yeah. With his new, li his little friend. <laughs> yeah, his new little friend was along. <laughs> and the weather was beautiful, and the weather has been beautiful, although it's really cloudy this morning. The weather was not beautiful at 2 o'clock when I was setting up in a parking lot. <laughs> it was hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cooling off a little bit. Most days, it's not scorching hot. Unless you're standing in asphalt at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, setting up a canopy and tables. And... But I had some good conversations um, with people, so... Well, still a good time for putting in new plants, new trees. I, really, you could plant anything this time of year, and it's going to be fine. People ask about, I have to replace my lawn, or maybe my house is being built, and they want to put down the lawn. When's the best time of year to do that? Any day, unless we're expecting a devastating freeze tomorrow. Yeah. That's the only time you might want to try to avoid other than that, any time of year you can put a uh, sod down. Um, now is a really good time because the sun's not as strong. Yeah, but you're not getting any help from nature watering it right now. It is kind of dry, so you're going to have to spend the money uh, watering it, the time and energy and money putting the water on. Mm -hmm. Spring is good, but it's pretty dry also. Summer's good because you get a lot of free rain, but the sun's really strong, so it might be a little harsher on your side but technically it could be put down anytime my um freedom lawn is nice and crunchy right now how about yours mine's drying out also and the funny thing is we're in a change of season right now 
the spring and summer weeds are all mature, they're all done, and they're starting to die mm -hmm. and leaving brown patches. Yes, yes, I have that. And the winter weeds haven't really filled in yet. So we're kind of between seasons plus the dry is right. making everything a little bit tan and brown. So. Yeah, I actually had to water with rain barrel water and then I got lazy and used the hose um, <laughs> with um, my wildflower gardens. They were even like, well, narrow leaf sunflowers were looking pretty droopy, but their other name is swamp sunflower. So gave them a good drink. You know, just maybe even once a week or so, if you have something like that, is enough to water them. Yeah. And it all depends on the nature isn't helping, yes. Yeah, I have uh, in the vegetable garden seedlings in the ground for Swiss chard and broccoli. Mm -hmm. And I also have a lot of, a couple different kinds of kale that are up and a couple of stir fried vegetables that are up. So they need really regular watering. Mm -hmm. but most of your other landscape material, yeah, you're going to have to water eventually. I mean, if it's sunny and dry every day, after a certain point, you'd have to break down and water, but you don't have to water a lot of it every single day. Good morning, Monique. Good morning, Monique. How are you? Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, if you have any questions at all about lawn and garden topics or water and water conservation or what to plant this time of year, or just how great of a time you have tuning in, watching Virtual Plant Clinic Live. Now is the time to share in the chat and Sam, we can try to answer Sam, the questions. Yeah, Sam enjoyed our program we did yesterday on the creepy crawlies. Creepy crawlies, um, the cryptic lives of Florida insects. We had a good time with that one, I think. That was pretty interesting. And the um, jewel wasp, I looked up, and there's videos online about that. The Entomological Society of America has a little five-minute-long documentary video. There's no sound to it, but the photography is amazing. That shows you what they do, and I'm not even sure if it's appropriate for family <laughs> live broadcasting. It is. I, I think they enjoyed that story at the end. It was not a Florida bug, so we just had it as an add-on at the end because Bill was interested in the zombification of, you know, uh, I, I thought it was good because the victim thereof are roaches, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, roaches don't have a whole lot of fans, so <laughs> I don't know why. I like, they don't bother me. Uh, no. I mean, I'm glad they are decomposers outside. They can stay out there and get out of my way. And Buddy no. has a question for you, Lily. No, it, it wasn't was your... because you weren't there. So we did not record it. So you missed, no, it is recorded. <laughs> it is um, on my Facebook page right now, pinned to the top. And shortly, Within a week or so is the usual time frame. Um, it'll be on Hernando County Government YouTube as well. But believe it or not, I'm not the only thing that John um, in uh, the Public Information Office has to do. <laughs> it's not his only job just to put my stuff up on YouTube. So, <laughs> so sometimes there's a little bit of a lag, but he does a really great job. And it's usually not more than a week. Well, I emailed him with a video and a couple questions like a day or so ago, and I haven't heard back from him yet. Yeah. He, and I'm shocked because he usually gets right back to me, he's but been he does have other things to do. Yeah. He, other departments, they've been doing little videos um, talking about various topics and stuff, and that's all him. He has to do all that. So <clears throat> and he does a great job keeping up with, I mean, I send him a video a week. <laughs> yeah, he does a good job with the video work, and because of that, I don't have to learn how to do it and do it myself. Right. I could learn. I should learn. I don't have the time to learn, but that's that's not a very good excuse. I have not dedicated the time to learning how to do it, and I need to work on that. Well, also, when you know, 
you work for the university, I work for Hernando County. So they want more than just one set of eyes seeing what they're putting on on their YouTube channel to make sure I'm not, you know, doing anything I shouldn't be doing. So <laughs> But I know I see a lot of comments from people, the occasional email. People really do appreciate the fact that we do classes virtually now and record it. And they can watch it three days later, whenever it's convenient for them, on Facebook. You know what I A couple you days later do, after it's up on YouTube. What I found you can do, which is more um, efficient to do it with these virtual plant clinics to treat it like a podcast. Um, but you can do it with our classes as well. It's just you might miss some of the pictures. And, you know, my phone is connected via Bluetooth to my car's audio system. So you can bring it on, bring it up via Facebook or whatever, turn it on and just listen to it while you're driving. You don't have the yeah. ear pods or earbuds or whatever they're called? My I don't, wife does. Okay. I, that's, I don't find one that fits into this phone. But, <laughs> I mean, it would fit into the the car thing probably but but i'm talking about when i'm driving alone so i don't need you know so sometimes i listen to you and i when i'm driving isn't that kind of weird <laughs> <laughs> you know i can never watch my own videos yeah. i'll check them to make sure yeah, that yeah. it works and it's there and it recorded and everything I never go back and watch them. I never listen to any of my recorded stuff. Um, yeah, I, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I kind of skim through it and make sure nothing terrible happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, Did I inadvertently and, pick my nose at that point or something? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And fortunately, the places that we put it, like put in closed captioning for people which is great but i do not go back through an entire one hour class and change the closed captioning to tweak it oh no we don't have time for that oh, i have 24 hours of my day yeah if you and can give me a few more hours of my day i might dedicate it to doing that but until that happens no. well youtube it automatically adds it facebook automatically adds it and they're both 98 percent of the way accurate they both do a good job not perfect yeah and apparently um i enjoy watching the closed captioning it amuses me because apparently i do not speak english <laughs> whatever does better for you than it does for me <laughs> i'm like okay if that's what i said all right we have a Bogan Deal question here from a new listener. Yes, Jim Stribling, who is either a new listener or maybe he's a lurker. And I don't know how many lurkers we have. People <laughs> who watch and, and they're afraid to ask questions. And then one day they finally break down and do it. Guys, if you're a lurker, if you've never made a comment or question or anything before, do me a favor and just go ahead and jump in and say, hey, good morning, or say where you're from or something. We may see you as Facebook user like I was when I, you know, logged, jumped in from my phone and you wanted to block me last, <laughs> last week. <laughs> yeah, because I go back and check and we have more listeners than we have question For askers. Sure. So. Sure. Yeah, that's but fine. Jim We're not asked. forcing you to, to participate. You know, if you just want to listen and learn, that's good too. When I am uh, not working, you know, the uh, Lily UC teaching classes are on this program. It's a completely different non, <laughs> the non-working Lily. Like, I was looking for something in the grocery store and my boss asked me, why didn't you just ask someone? And I'm like, because I wasn't working and the Lily who doesn't work, doesn't want to, you know, is very introverted. So it's quite fine um, to be a lurker, even to be, you know, a spouse of someone on this program and to, and to be a lurker. Jim's asking the Spogan via question from Newport Richie. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. When you ask a question, try to put down where you're at also, because we do have listeners from all over Florida and even outside of Florida. 
But Jim says his bougainvillea was hurt in last year's, or in the cold last year. It's blooming great, but not growing at all. Other ones are growing like crazy, but no blooms. Bougainvilleas are a little bit more tropical than what would technically grow in Central Florida. With that being said, they can grow great here if you get a bougainvillea. And it's funny, Especially when you Newport plant Virginia. it, he's, if, he's, you, yeah. if you put it in a spot water. where it's happy, it will grow like a big thorny weed and you will have to trim it a lot. Other times they don't take and they either die quickly or don't grow a whole lot. Um, they can Remember get, you know, that house we went to? That was basically oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to get in the house because of the bougainvillea and that was just in Spring Hill. Yeah, that poor older lady said she was she had to trim it like once a month, and bougainvilleas have thorns, which makes them a little tricky to to. It was trim. like um, the prince had to go through, um, you know, the the rose forest to get to Sleeping Beauty. That's that's what her bougainvillea was like trying to get into her house. Don't put it in front of your house. Yes, put it in a spot where it has room to grow and get larger. Otherwise, if it does well, you're going to be in a position where you're having to go out there and prune it every month. And now you're like, ah, I think has thorns. I don't want to do that. And it gets out of control. And then your wife, the lurker, starts yelling at you about not pruning things in the yard. But with bougainvillea, they can get damaged by freezes and frosts. Mm -hmm. It rarely kills them. They'll get knocked back a little bit. You can just prune off the freeze damage part in the spring. And like I said, if it's happy where it's growing, it will grow like a weed. Your one is probably not as happy. So if it's if it, it looks okay, time. their blooming season is just about to start. They normally bloom heavily during the winter. So we're coming up in the blooming season. But it, it needs it needs sun, doesn't it? Yes, so the it one needs that's full growing, sun. growing, growing with no blooms might not have enough sun. Yeah, too much shade is gonna um inhibit the flowering. They like full sun. Give them room. They look great if you give them room and they get large. When they flower during the winter, they're, they're really attention getters. From and people. they have thorns. From people. not not They're not a huge pollinator plant, but they're gorgeous. No. I haven't been to Miami. You have but uh, all the time, but I have seen pictures, and that's it just reminds me that there must be bougainvillea all over <laughs> Miami neighborhoods. Oh, Miami, uh, uh, down in South Florida, southern tip of Florida, the diversity of palm trees they have down there. Uh, some of the ones that we grow here grow really well down there and become really, really huge. Bismarck palms, we do have some here. Technically, we're too far north, but mm -hmm. the ones in the neighborhood next to where I live have done well for a number of years. They lose a few leaves every year. Oh my gosh, the ones down in Miami are the trunks are, I don't know how many feet across and they're, they're huge. Hmm. I was at your office Thursday picking up some stuff for um, the, the fun fest that I went to, but a lady had come in and there was nobody else around to help her. And I did try to hook her up with your boss who loves palm trees. But her issue was she has a sylvester palm. And um, she kept talking about a fungus that it had, and they were treating it, had treated one for the fungus and not the other. I think there's a couple of issues because I questioned her. They'd been pruning it, and they were almost looking, getting to the point of over, over pruning. And I explained to her about the growing point in the spear leaf and how you want to protect that with the fronds around it. And, but I asked her if they had used weed and feed on their lawn and she said, yes. So that can impact. Yes. And if you have a palm tree growing in your yard and you have turf grass anywhere near it, palm trees hate turf grass fertilizer. Way too high in nitrogen for palm trees. Mm -hmm. It could kill a palm tree within a couple of years just from doing that. So be very careful to keep the turf grass <clears throat> fertilizer away from palms. 
Now, palm fertilizer is fine for turf grass. Turf grass loves palm fertilizer. Okay. I Fruit told her trees. to look for a palm special, but to talk to Jim, your boss, because he's, you know, pretty adamant that um, some palm fertilizers are complete junk, you know, and you have to be real careful what you're getting, what you're looking for. And she kept saying, telling me she had been using Epsom salts. I'm like, well, that's one thing. That's magnesium. You know, you need manganese. Yeah. You need, it needs a bunch of other stuff. So, um, Jim, I don't know if we really answered your question about the bougainvillea other than, yeah, I guess, wait and see if it's going to start blooming, you know, as it gets cooler. Because now he has another question. Um, yeah, no, I'm looking up an answer to that one. <laughs> I don't know what Dallas grass is. Do you? Sure. Dallas grass is an uh, invasive grass that comes from like Argentina and countries around there. Uh, was introduced into the U.S. back in the 1800s as a forage plant, you know, for livestock wonder, probably. Okay. Yeah, he's a new for Richie though, but I wonder if he has Kogan grass since that is so prevalent around here. Kogan grass, you're rarely going to see that in a lawn. It can be there, but if you keep cutting the lawn on a regular basis, it never really gets big enough where you can tell it's Kogan mm -hmm. grass. Mm -hmm. um, so Dallas grass, it depends on what type of turf you have, whether you have St. Augustine, Bahia, or just mixture freedom lawn stuff. Mixture lawn, there's no way that you're going to be able to control any grass in a lawn that's made up of mixed grasses because no herbicides are so specific that it kills Dallas grass, but it won't kill Bahia or St. Augustine or okay. you know, it'll either kill grassy, you want to eat. It'll kill grass or it'll kill broadleaf. So it's not going to know I want this blade and not that blade of grass. Yeah. yeah, so this is in St. Augustine. Um, well, well, you know what? Obviously, that's probably why I don't know what it is, because you and I would just say, oh, look, it's green and looks like grass, so it can stay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're looking that's a difficult me. one. A lot of times there's really no good herbicide that will kill Dallas grass or something similar is without an damaging St. Augustine. Is it an annual weed? Will it be dying out soon? If it is annual, it's going to come and go. Mm -hmm. We might have to get back with you. <laughs> Why don't you show your yeah. email again? Show your email and he can email you to remind you to look that up and get back with him. Yeah, apparently Dallas grass is a perennial, so you can't use a pre-emergent. Ah. So it it may die back certain times of the year, but it's not um, going to go away. There's a really good chance that to control Dallas grass, and this goes the same for um, common Bermuda that comes up as a weed. There's no good control that's going to kill it without killing your grass. So mark off the area where you have the problem weed, and you're going to have to hit it all with Roundup or dig it up or both, and then replace the grass because there's no weed and feed or herbicide that will kill weed without we'll killing the earth grass also. Yeah. So the vinegar mixture will kill both the grass as well. It'll so act the, like the vinegar mixture is doing the same thing. It's, it's damaging or killing the St. Augustine also. Right. Because St. Augustine is not immune to vinegar. And vinegar, if you make a strong enough, if you have a strong enough vinegar to use, it damages any weed, damages the cuticle, will make it turn brown, but it's just going to grow right back from the roots. Okay. Doesn't, it's not a systemic... Yeah, so to get rid of it and not have it come back, you'd have to spray it with something that's going to kill everything, dig it up. I would wait another couple of weeks to see what comes up, spray it again. A lot of times for um, common Bermuda, they recommend spray and dig out 
two or three times before you put the new sod down because if you do that too early you're going to get Bermuda grass back in a few months it's still there it's going to sneak up between the St. Augustine now it's a problem um, so he said it hadn't really hurt the St. Augustine yes yeah, St. Augustine is not immune to vinegar damage Right. But vinegar only is really effective on certain plants and certain weeds. Other ones, it just doesn't work well on. And right now, your St. Augustine is um, responding to the shorter daylight hours. So it's going to start going into its semi-dormant state and not be actively growing. It's going to shed a whole bunch of its roots. Therefore, um, I would... Unless you plan on killing that St. Augustine, you know, taking that down to bare dirt, I wouldn't put it on now because the St. Augustine might be less able to fight it off than it would be during the summer active growing season. And you have to look at the situation. If you have a big patch of Dallas grass or Bermuda or there's a, a couple other grasses that would fall into this category also, if you have a big area, yeah, you're going to have to spray the whole area, mark it off, spray it, dig it up, do that a few times, resod it. If you just have individual little spots, you can go around and just hit them individually with a, a Roundup or um, um, some other kind of systemic, you know, herbicide that's going to kill everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the surrounding St. Augustine, if it's just a small spot, could and will hopefully fill in. Mm -hmm. People, people send me pictures. I get pictures of all kinds of yeah, stuff. It's just I got a picture. Show, yeah. Right now, your St. Augustine is trying to get ready to take a nap. And I don't know if I would want to be bothering it with chemicals and things. So. I got a picture from a lady who has a lawn. And she has, I can't remember what weed. It's a very viney weed. I think it's the one that makes the little stickies that get stuck on your dog and on your pants and shoelaces mm -hmm. the little kind of roundish flat ones that are all in a row together yeah 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 yeah. and she said she's been pulling it up and she had a picture of like a wheelbarrow full of what she pulled up and she's been using i think image on it which is safe to be used on saint augustine well, and will control those weeds weed. yeah what you're talking about is a broadleaf Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it could be effective, should be effective, but from pictures of her lawn, she had maybe, and I'll be generous, I'll say five percent Saint Augustine, and ninety five percent everything else. So if you have no grass or almost no grass, if you use a herbicide on your lawn, let's say it works perfectly, you know. The good then Lord you know, smiles on you and all the weeds die. No ground cover. Yeah. Now your lawn is 95% bare dirt. And you know what's going to happen to that bare dirt in a few weeks? More weeds. Something's going to pop up. It's going to be weeds. Yes. <laughs> so. So it could be like you and I who each have, I don't know, I might have, uh, let's say 33% <laughs> at this point, uh, Bahia, maybe 40% Bahia thrown mm -hmm. in there. And then other green stuff that's coming up and uh, we mow it and go on with our lives. On the other hand, we don't live in a, you know, a deed restricted community either, so. Yeah, and if you're trying to fix like a St. Augustine lawn and you have 5% weeds or 10% weeds, yeah, there's, there's things that you can do to get rid of the weeds depending on the weed, depending on how widespread it is. There's different steps you can take to fix things. If you're down to only five or ten percent good turf grass, you're going to have to resaw it, mm -hmm. or you're going to have to hope that your HOA is patient and they're going to allow you five years to let that lawn renovate and fill in and everything. Mm -hmm. Most HOAs aren't quite that patient. You and I are going to a deed restricted community at the end of the month to give a talk, and we're going to have our hands full because the reason they want us there and we've already been kind of told is that there are people who live in um, the villas meaning that they don't have control over their irrigation systems and um, 
EPA irrigation system, the people who do have control are telling the homeowners, your lawns are looking bad because we are only allowed to water once a week. Therefore, it's the county's fault. And they're villas, so they're kind of small yards, but they're telling their people, well, you should go out there and hand water, which as a matter of fact is against the watering restrictions. You can hand water your beds or whatever anytime. You can't really stand out in the middle of your lawn except for watering in what they call hot spots. You know, you can't cheat by standing with a hose and watering their lawn, but that's what they want people to do because they are convinced in their minds that the problem is these lawns aren't getting enough water. And what are they going to hear from us, Bill? <laughs> They're going to hear from me that their underlying problem is they're managing their St. Augustine incorrectly. It needs to be cut ideally four inches high. If you cut it four inches high, that solves a lot of problems. It won't dry out as quickly, won't need as much water, uh, shades out a lot of the weeds that they're probably having problems with. What the things that they will not hear from me is probably what they're hoping I'm going to talk about, but I will not. I'm not going to talk about giving them more water because you're only allowed to water once a week. And I know people with beautiful St. Augustine lawns yeah. that water once a week and they can do it. Right. Now, I'm not going to talk about fertilizer because, you know, their services pour more than enough fertilizer on there. They mm -hmm. are not shy. They bring fertilizer in by the dump truck load. If their problem was shortage of fertilizer, they would have fixed it long ago because they over fertilized the heck out of their lawns. And the problem is not using the magical correct weed killer. If you manage your St. Augustine poorly, weed killers aren't gonna help. Water's not gonna help. Fertilizer's not gonna help. None of that helps. Water fertilizer could do a really, really great job at feeding um, take all root rot though. Sure, and I guess I'm going to have to offer to speak with somebody about um, picking up samples, random samples from around there. Way back when we did that for the other neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, my boss, Jim Davis, went out there and picked up samples from like 10 lawns. I think they all came back with take all, mm -hmm. all 10. So, mm -hmm. so this may be the same situation, but I'll have to get samples and look at them. Maybe send them off. Maybe just look at them and diagnose it myself. It's probably obvious that they have take all. Yeah. Well, you know how to see it on the roots in a microscope. Yeah. If it's uh, really pronounced, you can very, very easily see it. If it's kind of a borderline case, uh, it can be a little tricky to see. What is take all root rocks scientific name? Guamanomyces graminus graminus. He made that up. Um. <laughs> So. Guamonomyces graminus is a soil-borne fungus that can attack a lot of different things. It's a huge problem with growing wheat out west, like Oregon, Idaho, mm -hmm. states around there. There's other forms of this fungus that attack. Their main host plant is other grassy plants. You know, wheat is a grass. Yeah. I think that there's one strain that's a problem with corn. So it can cause problems with, with corn, but um, the one that attacks St. Augustine grass is Guamonomyces, that's the genus, Graminus, that's the specific epithet, and then the variety is Graminus also because it attacks grass, St. Augustine grass. All right, so... That is your plant pathology lesson for today, yes. everyone. So it is very, very common in Central Florida. Um, very likely that if you have, if you're having lawn problems, it's not due to a lack of watering. It is due to this take all root rot, which can kill a lawn. It, it can if it's yeah. let go, but it also can be managed. And that's done with uh, proper cultural care, like you said. And the really, 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 what's the number one way to handle that? 
cut your grass very tall. Yeah. As tall as you can. St. Augustine likes that. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, we'll go to these neighborhoods and they want to argue and they think that water is the solution. And in the past, we've had neighborhoods that kind of found creative ways to get around or violate the watering restrictions. We've had wet summers. I can easily look up the average rainfall here in Hernando County for any time period I want. They measure it. It's on record. So we'll go for a while months where we get, it rains a couple times a week. And I ask them, so did your lawn recover? Did your lawn look great after all that rain? No. I thought the problem was lack of water. Your lawn should look great after that. Mm -hmm. How about fertilizer? You had your service, double the fertilizer. Did that fix it? No. Well, maybe that's not the problem. Mm -hmm. If it was, your lawn should look fantastic and you shouldn't even be here at this function or class or question and answer period or whatever. You should be home looking out the window at your beautiful lawn. If water and fertilizer fixed it, you should be a happy person out golfing with a beautiful lawn. And I should be sitting here, the lonely guy with nobody asking me questions. Well, guess what? Speaking of such things. I saw an email from HR. They send out, you know, um, job openings. Mm -hmm. And there are two job openings. It passed through the budget. I've been warning you guys about this. So it is passed through the budget. So the job is being, the jobs are being um, advertised. We are going to have two code enforcement officers. They will work for code enforcement. You know, that's the, that's the department they will work for. But they will kind of be ours, our little soldiers. <laughs> Their entire job. I'm so happy. I mean, I shouldn't be. <laughs> My phone is going to be ringing off, hook, off the hook. But these two people will work split shifts so that one is early, early morning. One goes late into the night. There will not be much time, and eventually there will be no time when one of these two aren't working. Um, and they will not care about, you know, cars parked illegally. They will not care about, you know, junk in the yard. They will care about one thing, watering restrictions, following the watering restrictions. So one will be working early, 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 like, you know, four to noon. And the, I mean, and the other will be working like, you know, way into the night only looking for violators of watering restrictions you know restrictions and they will be in the gated communities as well so pass the word to your neighbors <laughs> we've got our alice and lily have our little soldiers which will be out on the streets soon <laughs> so. so it's time to check those systems check the timer you are allowed in Hernando County, and I would assume in most other counties, I can't say for sure, check with your county first, but you're allowed to go out there on a Saturday morning and run through your system, hit zone one, make sure the sprinkler heads work, make sure they're not broken, make sure you don't have any little volcanoes of water spraying up, make sure every the timer is set and things are coming on at the right time, going off at the right time. These systems have to be double checked frequently. They say at least annually. I'd say monthly. If you have a service that cuts your grass, you need to check it monthly because those big lawnmowers and big tires will beat the heck out of your sprinkler heads. And the they'll break them, they'll knock them out, have, of, out of focus. And yeah, the official time is 10 minutes that you can have each zone on that while you're checking it, mm -hmm. while you're auditing, auditing it. <laughs> So, so you can call it an audit. You can call it a check. You can call a um, irrigation service and they'll come out and do that. They'll go through zone by zone, make sure everything is working correctly. But like I'm saying, don't think, well, I did that five years ago. It still works correctly, right? <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Um, I used to yeah. have to check mine every month and I, I would always find messed up sprinkler heads every time. So Bill has something that you know what it sounds like to us but we, we haven't seen that problem in a while yeah that bill like says the worst parts of my saint augustine are the areas that are in close proximity 
to asphalt and concrete, especially the strip between the street and sidewalk. The rest looks great. You may have a problem with chinch bugs, and either you or your service is going to have to get down there and crawl on their hands and knees and look for it because chinch bug damage mimics or looks very similar to other things. But yeah, asphalt and concrete get really hot on a hot, sunny day, right? I mean, mm -hmm. try walking across the street in your bare feet at high noon in the middle of August. It's really hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that heat will heat and kind of scorch the grass right next to it. So trouble spots for St. Augustine tend to be next to a sidewalk, a driveway, asphalt. If you do have chinch bugs, they like those spots. They like it where it's hot, dry, and sunny. And the the strip, what what, what do people call that strip? The death strip or something? The or, hell strip. The hell strip, yeah. That strip between your sidewalk and the street can be really difficult to grow grass because it's surrounded by hot stuff. If you live in a neighborhood where when they built the houses, they put oak trees there, I'll give you a little word of advice because our son just bought a house over in Orange City, over in Volusia County, and they built the neighborhood and it's something or other oaks. So you okay. have to have oak trees. <laughs> they put a ton of oaks there and they put them in the strip between the road and the sidewalks and so you have in a couple years and the sidewalks are all popping up. Uh -huh. So every homeowner there is being assessed with huge charges to cut the oak trees down and get the roots out because little oak trees turn into really big oak trees. And if you don't give them plenty of room, proper planting when you plant them, bad things will happen to anything close to it, like the wall of your house, roof of your house, your sidewalk, whatever, it might be sprinkler system. Those roots are going to grow and pop things. And the roots won't be able to be very well anchored because of, you know, the urban situation that it's in. So they come down and bring everything with them during hurricanes. Mm -hmm. well. So Bill also says, <laughs> great news, Lily. My neighbor across the street runs their sprinklers every day and at the wrong times. So will you have a, an anonymous hotline set up by any no. chance? No. Nope. Oh. Code enforcement will not take anonymous calls any longer. That, that's oh. they, they, they refuse anonymous calls. Even <clears throat> if I try to call them, they tell me they need to know who I spoke to. And I understand why. You know, there's some, you and I have been through that before. You can tell through through someone's tone of voice pretty soon in a phone call, either one, they're looking for, they're calling you for litigious reasons, <laughs> they're looking to sue someone, or two, they just have a beef against their neighbor. So, you yeah, know, yeah. if you were code enforcement, you would get those kind of phone calls every day. So, you know, if you, they, I, you know, they probably, I don't know for sure. So <laughs> I would say they don't tell the neighbor who you are, but they want to know who you are yeah and after a while i mean there, there's there's always a random chance at this point that they're going to come through your neighborhood and your neighbor is going to be prime target for them so people don't learn until they get that big fat ticket but then pretty quickly the word gets around the neighborhood and on neighborhood facebook groups and everything else and people are all outraged and irate but they learn that you don't do it Unless you want to pay that great big ticket. Well, and some people were telling me some people are willing to pay it anyway. They'll just, you know, call, they'll yeah. just say, oh, well, I'll just pay it and I want to keep watering. There's only like two times that you get tickets. Uh, and here's how it normally works. If they see you violating, they have clear proof of you violating, you're not getting a warning, you're getting a ticket. If they have a suspicion or, you know, then you may get a little reminder of what you should be doing um but if they catch you watering in the wrong day you get a ticket then you get another ticket double that i don't know what the prices are but they're not cheap and pretty after that you are appearing before a special magistrate so you know it's not fun <laughs> not something you you want to just say oh well that's i'll just pay the cost so and if you want to do that 
you can go right ahead. <laughs> and Bill says that with, with his St. Augustine in the hell strip there and around the edges, a guy from Sod Solutions did get on, on his hands and knees and identify chinch bugs. Good for him. That's what you yeah. have to do. They're really tiny. They're only the size of a grain of pepper. And unless you're Superman with supervision and you can see a pe grain of pepper sized bug from 20 feet away, you have to get on your hands and knees and look. Use a hand lens, use a microscope. I use a microscope and, you know, look at samples. He encouraged me to spray and maybe plug and not waste my money buying sod from him. So. Mm -hmm. So that is a tough section or area normally to keep grass growing. And a little word of warning, if you do have a problem with legitimate chinch bugs, and you, you can spray, you can get rid of them, you can control them, they're always going to come back in the same spot. So keep checking the same spot where they came before. That's where they're most likely to pop up again next year or the year after or whenever. But it is unusual anymore that your problem is chinch bugs. It could be. It, he described classic chinch bug issues. But take all root rot is about 90% more likely <laughs> for your general average lawn to be the problem than chinch bugs. Or it could be we've seen broken sprinkler heads yeah. cause dead areas. Uh, the hell strip out there, if people are in the habit of pulling up and parking on that grass, number one, they're going to break any sprinkler heads that are there really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a car is going to do a lot of damage to a pop-up sprinkler head. And St. Augustine and Bahia don't do really well with a lot of um, heavy foot traffic or vehicle traffic. Right. Those, those strips are terrible. To put. I mean, they're difficult to mow, to maintain. They should put something other than turf there, some other kind of ground cover. So. And I would like to encourage everybody watching today, and even if you're watching a recording of this, please take a moment to complete our very short survey to let us know how we're doing. Um, let me go ahead and put this in the chat also. It would help if I copied it and pasted it. And there we go. That way everybody has it in the chat here. Uh, that's just a very short Qualtrics survey, only a few questions. A whole bunch of our listeners have taken it, and all of them said it was very painless mm -hmm. and brief. So don't be afraid of the I survey. Took I took it too. Because you made me. <laughs> I, I'm his beta tester. <laughs> well, <thank you. laughs> yes. Yeah, I said I send things to Lily about can you can you sign up or do this just to make mm -hmm. sure it works, make sure I did it right. So Yep. Okay, guys, I think we're gonna have to wrap it up here shortly. I have another class coming up a little bit later on that I need to get set up for and work you on the technology goats. and everything else. You have goats, goats in the house. <laughs> Yes, we do have ghosts. We have a class coming up. Um, here, talk for a moment or answer Bill's question. Oh, okay, here, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a link to where you can register for our classes, and it starts at noon today. So give me just a okay. moment here. Yes, Bill says that um, that would be a great, it would make total sense to not have turf in those strips there. Um, but it's not allowed in his community. It's not allowed in most communities and they just kind of get set in their ways of how they want to do things. Sterling Hill is not uh, exclusive in that, but I really see 25, 30 years in the future. Bill and I talk about this all the time, especially Floritam or having the perfect type of turf. I don't see that being a sustainable practice 25 30 years into the future i think some things are going to have to change i think the young um, younger millennials as well as gen z will not be interested in you know perfection in a saint augustine lawn i think they will be looking for other alternatives so i i you know i look for a change and also 
if you look at, go back and it's on Hernando County Government YouTube, Bill and I's class on freedom lawns, which you're not allowed to have in some of the escaped communities, but we do talk about the future and the anticipated water needs in Florida's future. There'll be plenty, even with population growth, there will still be, you know, up through 2030 and beyond, plenty of water for humans to use for their needs, but not to also put on lawns. We're going to have to make choices. So. And there are a huge number of people, organizations, government entities that are all working on this. It's just everybody needs to kind of jump on the train or realize that if you have a perfectly beautiful St. Augustine lawn and Bob, your lawn guy is cutting it an inch and a half tall because you want to be able to use this as a putting green and you water it every night and you fertilize it once a week, you're not going to be able to do that for much longer. The watering restrictions are going to get tougher. Fertilizer ordinances are going to get tougher. Um, new Builders are starting to build neighborhoods where they don't even put in irrigation systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And um, we've heard from experts at the University of Florida. They've been talking for years about what they would like to see, what they recommend. The community of the future is um, kind of the community of the past. That's what amuses me is that um, they would like to see these communities have the humans more densely together even, you know, four stories or higher, you know, put the humans densely together, leaving more natural lands in these communities. And that will also help with uh, climate change and potential flooding, you know, leaving more recharge areas and, you know, not, and I'm just as guilty, you know, I've got an acre in my house is sitting on but we all don't need an acre you know we all don't need ever well, you since got like a plantation going on out there don't you ever since world war ii and the move to the burbs that everybody made it's the american way that we must have a big yard the bigger yard the happier we are that's also i don't think going to be a sustainable practice we're going to go back to where like the village, you know, put all their houses together for safety reasons. We're going to be doing that for environmental reasons, I think. Well, the thought for today is because we need to wrap it up in a moment that a bigger yard means you can have a bigger vegetable garden. Yeah, that too. <clears throat> and that's what I'm working on. Given enough time, I will end up farming the entire backyard. Okay, cool. Bit by bit, one square foot at a time. There you go. Things will spread and grow and you know, I could put another bed in over there. I could work a strip in over here. I could burn some more stuff up against this. And bed. that, again, is back to the old ways. When, you know, that's why we have lawns, because people started wanting to show how affluent they were, that they didn't need to use every inch of land for survival. And now we're going back to, like, hey, we should use every inch of land <laughs> to do something practical. <laughs> and if you want to have a lawn, that's fine. What you should consider is getting goats to graze your lawn. And Good we, segue. if you're interested in goats, we can help you out. The link that I put in the chat is for, uh, if you'd like to register for our set of classes, episode two starts at noon today. We're going to be talking about what goes into raising goats. And we're going to have our, um, I know what comes uh, out of it. County goats. agent, Laura here who knows all about goats, livestock, chicken, all those things. And one of our master gardeners who raises goats, and she's bringing some goats to the office. That's why I have to go soon and go take care of the goats and get the camera set up. But go ahead and go to that link and sign up for today. It's at 12 o'clock. And the second half is Lily. They're going to be talking about making cheese. Ooh. How do you make cheese? Cool. Where does cheese come from? The grocery store, right? No, it comes from milk, which can come from goats. Exactly. So if you want to raise, if you're thinking about getting goats and making cheese, we got you covered today from 12 to 1. I think most feta is sheep cheese, though. But feta has, uh, I think it is sheep cheese. Mm -hmm. Real goat I love goat cheese. I love goat cheese. 
my husky would not let me have a goat because <laughs> he's not a herding. I don't know. He might have. He would get used to goats and probably take Maybe a He lets you have a chihuahua. He'll let you have a goat. Yeah. You know, if you kept I the could, goat in the house. <laughs> we could never have like a pet squirrel. He would eat it. Yeah. And we couldn't have chickens. They're they're too small. Yeah. A herding dog would be great. I don't know. I don't know what a husky would do with, with goats. I don't know. And I'll probably never find out either. I live in Spring Hill. I'm not allowed to have goats. <laughs> You can have chickens, though. <laughs> but we're going to go in just a moment. Four, four chickens. <laughs> yes, I could have chickens if I want. If my neighbors say it's okay. I and only have chickens. two neighbors physically. No roosters. no roosters, and you can only have four. <laughs> yeah, I only have two neighbors physically bordering me. So. Hmm. So... Buddy has a question about what comes from raising goats. No, you you were talking. You didn't hear me. You said I said I know what comes out of raising goats. That's what's but, and he's referring to that in the last few minutes, we came back to poop. <laughs> we did, didn't we? Hey, That's buddy, what? Common thread what? through every yesterday's episode. class um, about the creepy crawlies. We get we get well into. Into poop. <laughs> so. Well, sure, because we had dung beetles. Uh -huh. You always got to throw dung beetles in. They're cool. They're pretty. Yeah. yeah. I think even before we got to the dung beetles, there's some reason that poop came up too. I don't know. But... It always seems to get in there somehow. I guess. Oh, you your soldier flies, the manure. Or the oh yeah, they eat poo yeah. too. So yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, hey everyone. I think it's about time for us to wrap this up. So thank you so very much for joining us today. We will be back again next Thursday. Lily, I'll be here. Yeah, as far as I know, I'll be here. Okay, I'll try to get a guest. There's somebody I was going to try asking. Yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll I'll, I'll say people. that you never do it. <laughs> so. I'll t like well, that's why I say I'll try to get a guest. I don't okay. guarantee I'll get a guest. And the day before, I have a class on Much Ado about mulch. Mulch, a very deep topic. It, it really, you know, if you think about it, how can little chunks of wood be interesting to talk about? But it is, it is interesting to talk about. It's about soil building and... Be sure uh, to mention those falling leaves. Yeah. Um, I have a... In my backyard, I have a wild cherry tree, and it's in my neighbor's yard, but a lot of it, it's really big, and a lot of it hangs over my yard. Dumps a ton of leaves in the backyard. They mm -hmm. all get composted. They yeah. all go back into the vegetable garden. Every, I'll go out there and just start going after individual leaves at the very end. They're so important to the whole process. So leaves. Absolutely. Yeah, that's mentioned. Natural mulch is mentioned. That's what happens in the forest. That's how our soil was built for you know however many million years so okay well thanks again everybody and apparently both of us at least will be back again next thursday so please be to sure to come of, back to the best thursday of my knowledge yes. at and 10 a.m i'm gonna decorate my um background won't be as halloween <laughs> <laughs> back right. to just normal back. hey you're gonna have to get start with a thanksgiving background there we go I have a turkey on them Bye. there you go break out the turkey Bye. Okay. <laughs> to go. It's again, guys. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.